Hello, I am Anahit from the Central Bank of Armenia and the Global Forecasting School. Today, our discussion will focus on endogenous credibility and economic modeling. Adapting the forecasting and policy analysis system to modern challenges. This is an area where my colleagues Douglas Laxton, Heika Zigitian and Shalva have conducted extensive research, producing insightful paper that contribute to the ongoing evolution of economic modeling and policy analysis. In an era marked by rapidly evolving economic landscapes and increasing uncertainty, the role of central banks has never been more critical. Our discussion centers on the evolution of the Forecasting and Policy Analysis System, FPAS, to its Mark II version, which aligns with Mervyn King's call for economic models to reflect the endogenous nature of central bank credibility based on policy actions. The original FPAS, widely used by inflation-targeting central banks, has faced limitations due to its emphasis on baseline projections and local approximations. These constraints have often hindered the system's ability to accurately represent the evolving credibility of central banks, which is crucial for effective monetary policy. While limited resources are often perceived as a barrier to success in the complex world of central banking, this perception is far from the truth. The effectiveness of a central bank is not determined by the size of its budget or the scale of its resources, but by the strategic use of those resources, combined with innovative practices and a commitment to transparency. Several smaller central banks have exemplified this principle through their exceptional transparency and innovative policy practices. For instance, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand and the Riksbank have been pioneers in adopting transparent communication strategies. These banks provide detailed reports on their monetary policy decisions, publish their economic forecasts, and engage in public discussions about the rationale behind their actions. Such transparency not only enhances the credibility of their monetary policy, but also fosters greater public trust and understanding. These smaller central banks, despite operating with limited resources, have set high standards for transparency and accountability, pushing the frontiers of monetary policy making. Their success stories serve as powerful examples, proving that even with smaller budgets, it is entirely possible to maintain high levels of analytical rigor, public engagement, and effective policy execution. These institutions exemplify that success in central banking is less about the scale of resources and more about strategic innovation and a commitment to best practices. First, let's discuss the foundation of an FPAS Mark I central bank. The FPAS framework was originally designed to answer three fundamental questions that guide monetary policy decisions. One, where is the economy today? This question helps policymakers understand the most recent economic data and trends, forming the basis for their analysis. Two, what are the underlying forces in the economy? This question encourages a deeper examination of the factors driving the economy challenging conventional assumptions like the natural rate of unemployment, potential output, and inflation expectations. 3. What actions are needed to achieve our objectives? This final question is critical, as it defines the policy path necessary to meet economic targets, ensuring that the central bank's credibility is maintained through consistent and well-justified decisions. Historically, many central banks have relied on a baseline macroeconomic projection to address these questions. However, while this approach has provided a foundation for monetary policy, it often falls short in dealing with uncertainties and complex economic dynamics. For instance, many central banks focus heavily on the first two questions, but offer limited insight into the deeper forces at play or the necessary policy actions. This brings us to the evolution toward an FPAS Mark II framework which embraces a risk management approach. As former Fed Chair Alan Greenspan emphasized, uncertainty is not just an important feature of the monetary policy landscape, it is the defining characteristic of that landscape. The FPAS Mark II framework seeks to address this uncertainty by incorporating several key elements. A scenario-based approach to policy analysis. This involves developing multiple plausible scenarios that could influence the economy allowing policymakers to better anticipate potential risks and adjust their strategies accordingly. Policies of least regret. Here, the focus is on minimizing the chances of making decisions that could have significant negative consequences, even if that means taking more cautious or unconventional actions. Jud Judgment-heavy policy analysis. Recognizing that models alone cannot capture all economic complexities, 
F Pass Mark II places a greater emphasis on the informed judgment of policymakers, ensuring that decisions are both flexible and grounded in a thorough understanding of the risks involved. As I can say, the shift from F Pass Mark I to Mark II represents a significant advancement in how central banks can navigate an increasingly uncertain and complex economic environment. By embracing a risk management approach, we can enhance the credibility of our monetary policy and ensure that our decisions are both robust and responsive to the challenges of the modern world. The heart of this discussion is the concept of endogenous credibility. This is the idea that a central bank's credibility is not static, but evolves based on its actions and the public's perception of its commitment to its targets. Specifically, when inflation is high, a central bank might need time to build or restore its credibility. If the public doubts the central bank's ability to control inflation, expectations can shift, making it harder for the bank to achieve its targets. The concept of central bank credibility has been around since the early days of inflation targeting. Credibility is critical because it ensures that when a central bank sets a target, the public and markets believe in its ability to achieve it. Central bank credibility in this framework means a credible macroeconomic framework where long-term inflation expectations are anchored in bond markets and by wage and price setters. Effective transmission mechanism which includes how well real interest rates and exchange rates function as shock absorbers. One model that exemplifies this approach is Endocred. It offers a sophisticated framework for understanding and managing credibility. Here's how it works. 1. Endogenous policy credibility. Endocred starts with the assumption that credibility is not fixed. In periods of high inflation, policymakers may either build credibility gradually or risk losing it if their commitment is questioned. This dynamic process is crucial because it reflects how real-world perceptions of credibility change over time. 2. Nonlinearities. Unlike traditional linear models, Endocred includes nonlinear elements. For instance, the model incorporates a convex Phillips curve and a nonlinear credibility process. These features better capture the complexities of how inflation expectations evolve. 3. Monetary policy loss function. Instead of relying on a standard reaction function, Endocred uses a loss function that accounts for the cost of deviations from inflation targets, potential output and interest rate fluctuations. This approach offers a more comprehensive view of the trade-offs central banks face. Endocred illustrates the adaptability of semi-structural models to address key challenges central banks face. It helps in strategizing for scenarios where inflation expectations are not well anchored and provides insights into restoring credibility and managing the effective lower bound of interest rates. So let's look at the example of US. To track the Fed performance, we utilize the sticky price index from the Atlanta Fed. This measure is particularly valuable because it captures prices that adjust infrequently, offering insights into underlying price setting behavior in the economy. A common example of a sticky price is the cost of haircuts. Typically, such non-traded services, which require domestic labor, adjust periodically in response to underlying inflation trends, influenced by both demand and supply dynamics. This graph reveals a compelling narrative about the evolution of Federal Reserve credibility over time. During the 1960s, the Fed enjoyed high credibility, which was later undermined in the 1970s under Chairman Burns. The persistence of high inflation and inflation expectations during this period eroded the Fed's credibility, leading to a loss of confidence. The Volcker era, beginning in the late 1970s, faced the challenge of restoring price stability amid a low credibility environment. The severe policy measures implemented during this time were crucial in re-establishing credibility. Following this, the Fed managed to maintain stability for several decades, with inflation remaining under control, allowing it to build and sustain credibility, whether due to effective policy or fortuitous economic conditions. However, the recent inflationary pressures brought about by the COVID-era disruptions have once again spotlighted the importance of credibility. This graph underscores the ongoing need for central banks to manage and restore credibility effectively to maintain economic stability. In our upcoming paper, we extend the model to compare the United States and the Eurozone, focusing on how credibility, or its absence, impacts the monetary transmission mechanism, particularly the exchange rate. If this mechanism isn't functioning properly, urgent and decisive action is necessary. 
Let's consider the period following the global financial crisis. A strategic approach would have been to lower interest rates immediately to their minimum, which could have significantly reduced the risk of the Eurozone getting stuck in a prolonged low inflation trap. This would have also better prepared the region for the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, the Eurozone found itself trapped in a low inflation environment, with inflation expectations far below the target. In contrast, the United States managed to keep its inflation expectations well anchored. Then, as the pandemic hit, uncertainty caused inflation expectations to drop even further in both regions, affecting both supply and demand, and lowering inflation in the short term. Under normal circumstances, when inflation expectations decline, the central bank would reduce interest rates, leading to a depreciation of the exchange rate. This depreciation would help close the output gap and bring inflation back to target levels. But the European Central Bank faced a unique challenge. It was already operating with interest rates at their effective lower bound. As a result, real interest rates increased, putting additional upward pressure on the exchange rate when what was needed was a depreciation. This only deepened the Eurozone's low inflation trap. As we moved into the post-pandemic period, central banks began tightening their monetary policies. This, however, introduced new challenges. High levels of debt meant that raising interest rates too quickly could spark a fiscal crisis. The European Central Bank in particular was slow to respond, which created an interest rate differential and further complicated their efforts by depreciating the euro at a time when inflation was already a significant concern. Looking forward, while the macroeconomic situation may have stabilized, the path ahead remains precarious. Another inflationary shock could easily reverse the disinflation progress made over the past couple of years, particularly if underlying inflation, driven by non-traded sticky prices, remains elevated. This scenario would not only challenge the perceived tightness of monetary policy, but also raise questions about the true neutral interest rate. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this discussion has provided valuable insights into the evolving nature of economic modeling and the role of central bank credibility. Stay tuned for our upcoming paper, where we'll delve deeper into these topics. Until next time, keep exploring the world of economic policy with us.